No code is a bad term. Over the past couple of years, no code has become one of the hottest phrases in tech startup land. But whether you jump for joy or cringe when you hear that term probably depends on whether you identify as a programmer. The no code revolution holds positives for everybody, but I am not at all surprised by the friction. It's an inevitable result of the name no code. Now it is technically correct. Code Academy says that programming is the mental process of thinking up instructions to give to a machine like a computer. Coding is the process of transforming those ideas into a written language that a computer can understand. While they have different meanings, coding and programming have come to be used completely interchangeably. And if you think that, it's not much of a leap to think that no code means ignoring the most important principles of creating software. I found that out pretty quickly when I stepped on this hornet's nest on TikTok. We'll come back to that, but thinking that no code means no programming couldn't be farther from the truth. The most important skills for being a good coder are the same most important skills for no code because both are building the same thing, software that is built for an end user. And the end user doesn't know or care whether you created the program with code or without it. They just care that they can accomplish what they came for, that the experience is intuitive and that their data is secure. My other problem with no code is that it implies that you either create software with code or without code. It draws an artificial line in the sand. In reality, the lines are much more blurry. If you write code, you probably also use no code tools and no code developers almost always use some amount of code. Aren't modern coding languages just a low code version of ones and zeros? There's a gradient all the way from those ones and zeros all the way to the most simple drag and drop uh, website builder like a Squarespace. And don't take my word for it. To hear a developer's perspective, check out this video by YouTuber Tech Lead or this great article by Mike Bifolco. So we're all creating software. Don't people still make it better with code though? I posted this video on TikTok saying that more and more software would be created with no code tools to the point where it would actually affect the marketplace for software created with code. Now, there are some solid reasons why no code could actually lead to more coding jobs and I'll cover why I think that later. But in the video, I implied that demand for coding would go down. Now, the video had a pretty normal like to view ratio, but I saw something that I had never seen before. Hundreds and hundreds of comments of people telling me I was severely wrong. There are two main reasons why people pushed back. The first thing that people pointed out was that you still need to think like a software engineer to create software with no code. Or they argued that the tools would fail because people would abandon projects, wouldn't document their work, etc. All of those comments support the idea that no code is being interpreted as no programming. The second reason I heard over and over was something like good luck building Netflix with a no code tool, basically saying no code is not for anything complex. It's just for simple stuff. Can't be complex enough. This assumes that the tools won't get better, but it is a valid point. It also misses an important part of the promise of no code, something that started all the way back in 1986. When people talk about coding, they think about bang. These companies create very complex software to serve all of the users in the world and to make their experience as easy as possible. Those companies will probably continue to make their software with code for a really long time because it's exceptionally complex and they have the resources to do it. But is that part of the software market the largest area for growth? I would argue, no, not even close. The largest area for growth by far is in all of the niche use cases, the ones where hiring a traditional developer would either be too expensive or too slow. For those use cases, no code tools, if we must call them that, have been in use by an enormous pool of users for over 35 years. I'm talking about the 750 million users who currently create their own software, often with great speed and urgency with Microsoft Excel. For those users, comparing software built with no code tools to software built with code is kind of like comparing a tent to a house when you're going on a camping trip. Yeah, a house is way nicer, but at the end of the day, there's only one that lets you completely change your plans, carry it on your back, and then set it up yourself at the end of the day. Spreadsheets created a new wave of simple software design, one where all of the boring tasks of the office got a new track, and no code tools are going to take all of that to the next level. Need a quick landing page for a product that you just developed? Here are some apps for that. Need a database? No code has you covered. How about a full featured web app where you can build an online marketplace or a company wide inventory? And the other interesting thing about this is remember at the beginning when I said that no code might lead to more coding work as well? That's because once a lot of businesses create no code tools to solve their problems, 
some of them will be getting enough value out of them that they want to upgrade their tent to a house. Even if a small percentage of the teams do this, it will lead to a huge new wave of software innovation, often innovation that requires code. Not convinced that people are creating actual software with Excel? Watch this video where I break down the reasons why Excel has always had enormous influence over the software industry and has even spawned many of your favorite mainstream SaaS products.